The second part of chapter four is a segment on the cell membrane. I mentioned earlier that one of the important features of these eukaryotic cells was the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. And so the first thing to figure out is what exactly is it? Well, it is the surface layer around the cell. It is the, the part of the cell that separates it from the outside. So here you can see this membrane and, and all of this is the membrane. So it has one, two, three layers really. So it's you know a layer on the top, a layer on the bottom, and then something in the middle. So it's a pretty interesting kind of boundary because it's not just like a plastic film or something like that. So it's not just one layer, it's actually a little bit more complex. And the question is what exactly is in it? It turns out that the two components it's made up of are phospholipids and proteins. Now if you remember our discussion on lipids, what a lipid could be, you know that lipids involve things like uh, fatty acids, right? That was one of the things. Acid. That could be part of lipid. Phospho, what do you think that means? It's a phosphate group. And so these phospholipids are a type of molecule that consists of a phosphate group and some fatty acids. And that's basically what they're composed of. And then a variety of proteins, those are the things that are composed of amino acids and they have a complex three-dimensional structure, those are also part of this membrane structure. Now here's the interesting thing. We assemble this membrane not as a boundary layer that can never be traversed. This is not what this does. This is actually a layer that allows us to work with something. It is a layer that interacts with the rest of the cell. It isn't like a plastic bag that keeps things out and keeps things in. It is actually an active player in how the cell interacts with its environment. And what that means is that the membrane can allow things in and can allow things out or it can block them selectively. So the membrane layers on the outside of the cell can be selective. And that's a very important feature of them because not everything inside of our cells should be able to get out. Not everything on the outside of our cells should be able to get in. More than that, because they're interactive, because they, they are part of the chemical makeup of the cell, not some inert feature, I like to call them lab benches for biochemical reactions. Now you probably know what a lab bench is. I mean a lab bench is the place where you go to conduct a lab, where you have the chemicals, where you have the glassware, where you have all the different bits and pieces you need to run an effective lab. Perhaps it's like your workbench space at home. And because there are so many different biochemical reactions in our cells, in particular in our eukaryotic cells, we do need a significant amount of this workbench space. Here's what that phospholipid bilayer looks like. And just as I mentioned to you earlier, the individual phospholipid looks like this. This one here is basically where the phosphate group is. And down here, these two things, those are the fatty acids. And what that results in is a structure that is different on the top than it is on the bottom. The top part, it turns out, is hydrophilic. So we have a hydrophilic head. In contrast, the center of this is hydrophobic. So they have a hydrophobic tail. Now that means this area in the middle here does not like water. This area out here is okay with water. This one in here is also okay with water, but not the middle. 
Now the reason why this is important is because if you take a whole bunch of these phospholipids and place them in water, then what these will do is they actually will form these little spherical structures. Not necessarily cells, but they are going to form these structures that are kind of reminiscent of cells with the things that are on the outside hydrophilic, the things on the inside hydrophobic. Now if you have something hydrophobic on the inside there is not going to be any water in here but if you want to have water and you want to encase it then you put a second layer of those with the legs going the outside towards the outside and that's ultimately what we have here we have the top layer hydrophilic and the legs hydrophobic and so this is how you make a cell membrane using a phospholipid bilayer a bilayer because there are actually two layers of these phospholipids one upside down from the other membranes like these can then include other kinds of molecules and this is where the proteins come in this is where you can imagine that this workbench is actually active in holding your tools so maybe this is a tool this is a tool this is a tool you have all these different tools on your lab bench on your workbench space and because of the way they're embedded some of them are going from the outside of the membrane all the way to the inside so they have a certain amount of reach which is very interesting some of them are important only for the outside some of them are important only for the inside but whatever it is they're embedded in these phospholipids and so there's a lot of interaction possible with these so it's a, it's a very complex layer people struggled to come up with a proper analogy for this how do you imagine something that's basically a living layer people used to know about eggshells and they used to know about the the shell of a nut and all of these are not involved in what allows things to come in and go out it's just a, a shell and it's a hard shell and that's what people were thinking of well this is different so they came up with a fluid mosaic model and it turns out that both of these phospholipids and the proteins that are sitting in them can actually drift through this membrane so the membrane isn't really a solid structure but it's very fluid and dynamic this this idea of having a fluidity to it with different kinds of things embedded that's what led to the idea of the fluid mosaic mosaic simply means lots of different kinds of things can be embedded in this membrane I think that when you're looking at a, a fluid model, you think mostly of a liquid. Think of something that's very viscous. Think of something like honey. Honey does flow, but sometimes it takes quite a while for it to do so. And so that's kind of like you can think of the, the fluidity of this. It's not liquid like water. It's just sort of a, a tough layer that's taking its time to, to float around. That's why we call it fluid. And then mosaic is simply because there are different types of proteins in there. I always like to give analogies. And that's one of the things you will recognize in this course. And so I came up with the analogy for a fluid mosaic. I find that dealing with the concept of a fluid mosaic is challenging for many, myself included, when I was an undergraduate. And so I want you to picture a baby pool. Now the baby pool is one of those cheap plastic pools that sort of got three rings of plastic stacked on a, uh, a bottom piece of plastic and you fill it with water and then you can sit your infant in there and you know they can play a little bit and so on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put some water on that baby pool and when we do that we have a layer of liquid inside the baby pool. So just, just bear with me when I do this. We have this pool and it kind of has these 
multiple layers right and on the inside too and in here that's where we're gonna put the water we're gonna then pour on top of that ping pong ball so that the entire top layer of the water is covered with these ping pong balls conceptually you are now looking at this baby pool from the top and you're looking at all these ping pong balls well those ping pong balls are the hydrophilic ends of your phospholipid they're the heads looking up at you now what you can do is you can place all kinds of things into that layer of ping pong balls and the ping pong balls will move to the side won't they an easier example is perhaps if you take your hand take your hand and stick it in the baby pool the ping pong balls will move aside but they will come right around your wrist so even though you can feel the water with your hands you know there's water underneath you cannot see the water and this is the interesting thing about this fluidity there is fluid inside but it's still closed off and so that's the that's the idea behind this being a good covering for the cell while at the same time being able to participate in the actions of the cell so the, the layer never really gets interrupted but it gets pushed around and you can do all these things you can put little styrofoam balls in there you can uh, put a basketball or two in there and it's just a difference in size those ping pong balls are always just gonna flow back around and so this is my model for a fluid mosaic membrane now in the next part we're gonna figure out what those membranes actually do in the body mm -hmm.